Hello, it's Zeke with the Eastside Church of Christ in Baytown, Texas. Thanks for joining us. We're continuing our Eastside 5x5x5 Bible reading this week for the week of April 25th through May 1st, 2021. We're in the book of Acts. We're looking this week at chapters 8 through 12 of the book of Acts. So let's get started. We recall that in Acts chapter 7, uh, Stephen made a defense of the faith before the council. And not only did he give a, a factual tracing of their history, he condemned them and rebuked the leaders for following in their forefathers' footsteps of rejecting the Lord's will. Of course, they jumped on him and stoned him to death, even as he prayed for their uh, forgiveness. Well, now in Acts chapter 8, on the heels of Stephen's unjust stoning, Acts 8 continues with a, a harsh persecution of the church led by Saul, a young man who had been holding the robes of those who were stoning Stephen to death. All the disciples, well, except for the apostles, flee north towards Samaria. They preach as they go. Many in Samaria are converted, including a certain magician named Simon. Peter and John come to the region and they strengthen the fledgling church there. Meanwhile, Philip, one of the seven from chapter 6, is instructed by the Lord to meet an Ethiopian who's on his way home back to Ethiopia from visiting Jerusalem. Philip instructs him from Isaiah chapter 53, and the Ethiopian believes the message about Jesus, and he's baptized and he continues joyfully on his way. Acts 9 shifts to the vehement persecution being wrought by Saul, who himself is traveling to Damascus to round up Christians for trial to bring back to Jerusalem. Confronted by Jesus on the road, Saul is struck blind and instructed to go to Damascus and wait for further instructions. Meanwhile, a disciple named Ananias is told to go to Saul. Understandably, he's reluctant. He hesitates. But the Lord tells him of the plans that he has for Saul. And Ananias approaches Saul. And Saul's world has been rocked and turned upside down. And Ananias tells him, that Jesus sent him. Saul obeys the gospel and immediately begins preaching Jesus, though the rest of the believers are a bit apprehensive about him. And again, the scene shifts, this time to Peter, who raises a benevolent woman from the dead. In Acts chapter 10, we meet a Roman centurion named Cornelius, who was praying to God. He's visited by an angel who instructs him to send for Peter. Peter, meanwhile, is having a vision of unclean food that he's told to eat. And this vision occurs three times. Peter deeply ponders what it might mean. And that's when Cornelius' men arrive and ask him to go with them. Cornelius is waiting with a house full of people who want to hear the Lord's will. And while Peter is preaching, the Spirit falls on the crowd and Peter's convinced that they're proper candidates for baptism. And it's clear to Peter what that vision meant. Of course, the conversion of the Gentiles reached the ears of some in Jerusalem. And Acts chapter 11 covers the report that Peter makes concerning his visit to Cornelius. He tells the Jews of his vision, the Spirit's arrival, and of the Lord's own promise concerning the Spirit. The Jewish believers glorify God for his mercy and in including the Gentiles in salvation. And then the shift and scenery occurs yet again, this time to the aftermath of the persecution from Acts chapter 8. Barnabas is shown looking for and then finding Saul, the one who was once a persecutor, but now a saint. And together, they work with the church in Antioch. Acts 12 contains yet another shift of scene, this time back to Peter again. Peter is arrested on the hills of James's execution by Herod Agrippa, and Peter was intended to be the next one by Herod. He's miraculously loosed from the prison, and he shows up at a house where other disciples are gathered together praying, probably for his release. The chapter concludes with the grisly death of Herod, which is attested to in the secular work of the historian Josephus. And there's a great contrast here. Evil men who stop God's work are dealt with. Meanwhile, the word itself marches on. We see that 
the work of the Word of God in the book of Acts continues to march forward. And along with it, there are not only conversions and glories given to God, but also trouble for the church and for those preaching the truth. Well, there's more to come, and we're glad you've joined us and hope you'll be with us again next time. Thanks a lot. We'll see you then. God bless you.